is good. Jesus left us the Holy Spirit with gifts and talents for all of us to be used. Now, I want you to write three things down as Christians. I want This is really important for you guys to write down and reflect on later. This is really important. One, does it tell us how old the, the three servants are? Huh? Does it? Come on, you guys, this is interactive here. Okay? Does it tell us how old they are? It's a lesson because God uses all ages. Whether it be seven or whether it be 95. God has not allowed you to die because it is not your time and you are to be using your talents for Him. Period. Second lesson. Does it tell us when they were given? Did they always have the talents or were they just given to them at one, one time? They were given to them at one time, you know? There are certain talents that you are given to as a child. Like me, I was been an artist. I was God-given talent to be an artist. Two of my sons have the God-given talent too. They're starting to develop their gift as an artist. A pastor, I wasn't given that gift until later in life. Some gifts have a season that interject in the middle of your life, maybe later, maybe sooner. There is no time limit. And some gifts are even removed for a season. But some gifts even carry through your life. Here's evidence, second thing. Third thing I forgot. I remember it later. <laughs> so, embarrassing moment, let's continue. <laughs> then he went on his journey. Jesus left the earth, left us with the Holy Spirit in our gifts. You can read those in Ephesians and Corinthians. The spiritual gifts that are given to us. Discernment. Gift of speaking in tongues. Gift of healing. Gift of, I love this one, administrative gift. We think that it was the world that invented the manager. God invented the manager in the orchestrating of things. And he said, that's my gift. Stop using it for the world. Use it for me. Gift of administration. It's in the Bible. All these gifts are used to edify, now who knows that verse? Edify the what? The body. The body of Christ. The church. In other words, God gave us gifts to glorify each other in reflection to God. So, when Jesus left, he went on his journey. And then in verse 16, then the man received... The man that received the first five talents, he went at what? Huh? Wow. Uh, went at once. In other words, he wasn't Filipino. Was he even a man that was not in a one group? Huh? You know all the funny excuses that we use? You know? See, he went at once because there's an urgency that when God gives you a talent, he doesn't let you sit on it. A lot of Christians come to church and they've been sitting on their talent for years after years after years after years after years and they're sitting there. I'm just waiting for God to call me. Just waiting. And God's telling him, listen, I gave you a talent to start using it. This man that received his five talents, he at once, right away, maybe the master hasn't even left yet, he at once put his money to work. Circle work with him. See, if I put 50,000 pesos on a table, and I said, you stay right there, I'm going to go to work, when I come back, you make 75,000, okay? And I go to work, and I come back from work, and I'm like, what? There's 48,000. See, money doesn't grow itself, but it's the talent that grows the money. 
Di ba? But let's refer it to our godly talents. God says, if you use the talent that I gave you right now at once, I will grow it. I will bless it. I will give you more talent. Who is sat in church? Now, I don't want you to be ashamed. Who has sat in church and looked at other people and said, man, why are they so talented? They can sing, they can teach, they can do this. Why oh, are they so good? Have you ever been envious of other people? Talent-wise? Not in a bad way, but you're just like, wow, how do they have so much talent? Let me tell you something. It's right here. Right here. You ready? The man who had received five talents went at once and put his money to work and gained five more. Nandubli ang iyong talento kay tumot dibutan niya ang galit sa gino. Kala na yun. He doubled his talent because he took it and he used it right away. You know why there are a lot of people with a lot of gifts and a lot of gallant talents? It's not just because of their ability. It's because they put it to work. And God said, man, that's a good steward right there. I'm going to appoint him with more. Make a little bit of sense? Seems to be the blessed people with a lot of talents and a lot of abilities are the people that were obedient. Remember that from last Sunday? They were obedient. And much was given to them. Jesus is just reinforcing it here. He says, at once he left and put the money to work and gained five more. So also with the one that had two talents, he gained two more. Both people doubled the talents that God gave them. The one that had two didn't sit there and say, I'm not going to buy the one that I bought. I'm not going to buy the one No. He sat there and he said, Man, I have 20,000. I'm going to put it to work. And God blesses it with 40,000. Let's put it into terms. He had two talents of abilities. One was washing a car. He's a real clean person. And he said, Okay, God, I'll just clean the church. That's my talent. That's my ability. I like to clean. I'm a real clean person. I don't mind it. And his other talent was treating people with compassion. And he just walked around, man. God bless you. How can I pray for you? You know, I'm really concerned for you. God says, man, look at my servant. He is so good with those two talents. Let me bless him with two more. You know what's the funny thing about that? He didn't complain that he only had two. And now that he was blessed, he's almost at the same as the guy that had five. Isn't that crazy? That's how God works. He says, you got to use the talents that I gave you. If you're not using them for me, then you're using them for yourself. Remember last week, there's only two ways. It's for God and it's for yourself. Remember, as a tenant, as a disciple, or as a worker, let me tell you about your talents. You're only using them for God or you're using them for yourself. Let's reemphasize what they're talking about. He's saying, listen, if God has given you to be a really smart person and you're good at studying books and you're good about education and you study really hard and you graduate from high school and you're the best at the top of your honors and then you go to college and you're super cum laude and you graduate from there and you go to be your master's and then you go to do your doctorates and then you start achieving all these things because you're just such a smart person. How much do you study the Word of God? It's a town! God says, I have given you a talent for one purpose, to be used for me. But when you use it fully for yourself, how much are you gaining? How do I know that? Let's be cool. Verse 17, so also, the one that had two talents, he gained two more. Verse 18, but the man who had received one talent, he went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid the master's money. Now, I remember reading this story when I was a kid, and I was like, wow. I'm like, what's so bad about that? He's like the best person of all. He wasn't touching his master's money. I remember 
remember number three? Number three. Number three. Did the master tell him how to spend the money? Did the master say, hey, I want you to go and invest in the McDonald's, and when you get the McDonald's, here's how you want it, and here's how you're going to be successful. Did the master say that? Did the master say that he can only invest it in certain things? Did the master even say that he needed to invest it? No. See, talent is a similar thing. You're given to it, and God doesn't dictate to you how you use it sometimes. He says you have to use it with free will to my glory. Wherever I put you. See, sometimes as Christians, we walk around and we say, I need to be called first before I use my talent. God's got to tell me personally that i got to be a singer, a Christian singer. Mm -hmm. If he says the words Christian, I'll be a Christian singer. Really? If God says I need to be a Christian businessman, I'll be a Christian businessman. God says, no, I'm giving you the talents. The one man that received one talent, he dug the hole, he hid it away. And I remember reading that as a kid and I'm saying to myself, I'm like, well, he's the good one. Because none of them were told what to do with the money. The master didn't sit there and say, okay, I'm going to give you 50000 If you're a good servant, you'll double it. He didn't give him clear instructions. So the one guy that didn't own the money, he hid it. He's like, oh, it's right there for my master. I saved it for him. I'm like, man, he's the best. Because he didn't use property that wasn't his. That's what I remember thinking when using it. I remember thinking when I was a kid, I was like, man, he's the really smart one. He didn't misuse the money. What if the first two guys invested the money and it didn't return? You know, money. I mean, that's a big risk right there. And then when the master comes home, you don't have money to pay it. That seems like a bad idea. So the good guy is the smart guy that sit there and hid the talent away and didn't use it, right? Seems logical, right? Right? Anybody there with me? Verse 19. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled the accounts with them. Let me ask a question to you tonight. How many believe that when you go to heaven, you're judged on your sin? It's not a pretty trick question. It's okay. How many believe that when you go to heaven, you're judged on your sin? <clears throat> Wrong. He came to return. Remember, this is a story about God the Father, or Jesus, however you want to look at it, the Trinity being one. Returning after his trip. He has ascended to heaven. He left us with the gifts and the talents. And he says, I'm going to come back and I'll hold an account for what? For what? For the talents. He says, I'm going to hold you accountable for the talents and what you did. He came back to settle that. Judgment day is not about judging your sin. I'll tell you that right now. You know what judgment day is an account for your talents and what you did for Jesus. A lot of us are going to be sitting there going to heaven all happy and be like, Woo -hoo, I'm making it to heaven. Woo and God says, I, 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 you know, I know I've done a lot of things wrong. I, I just know you forgive me. God's like, what are you talking about? I'm not here to judge your sin. I'm here to judge the talents that I gave you and what you use for me and what you use for yourself. A lot of people are going to be standing like, snap, I'm wrong. See, because when you go back to that analogy about your education, about your career, about being a really good study person, and you use none of it for God, God's going to say, I gave you a talent to be able to read books and understand it and comprehend it and retain the information and be able to speak it back out. It wasn't for you to become a doctor. It was for you to read the Word of God, retain it, memorize it, and speak it again. Oh, snap. a successful businessman for you to hoard the money and keep it 
said, really good for you, God. He said, I made you a good businessman so that you can bless the kingdom. I didn't make you a great artist or a great graphics person or a great engineer for you to design the most technological building. And when it comes to making a church of um, cocoa wood, we'll just use my son, number six, come but out no place. Corrugated metal. Ay, ito po na, ha? Ganong barato. Because this is the rich and the church. See, so one of us are blessed with an ability, but we don't use it for God. And if we do use that ability for God, it's very, very little. And God says, show me what you do with very, very, very little. And I'll bless you with very much. No wonder why people are walking around with the favor of God because they're fearful of not using the talents for God. Fearful. Some of you have been given a compassionate heart. You know, there's other people that make fun of those people with a compassionate heart. Like Joel Osteen. Jesus loves you. Yes, he does. They got a gift of compassion and heart. And they have to use it for God's glory. Going back to the master comes back to settle the accounts with them. Verse 20, the man who had received the five talents brought the other five. Master, he said, you've entrusted me with five talents. See, I've gained ten. Jesus has entrusted you with the talents. He's expecting you to return with the gain that you use with your talents. The man that had two talents, he said, I love this. Oh wait, I gotta read the remainder of that. In verse 20, when the master replied, he said, Well done, good and faithful servant. The same words that Jesus is going to utter when we get into heaven. Just in case you didn't think the parallel was similar. Between the Christian being the servant and the master being Jesus. When you go into heaven, Jesus is going to say, Well done, my good and faithful servant. He says this to the servant. He says, Good job. That's awesome. You are always a good servant. And then something happens here that I've never read. I'm going to read before I just look at here. You have been faithful with me. little things. I will put you in charge of many things. And then also something happens here that I never read and I never really understood. Because I'm going to make a confession to you. You know when I was a kid? Just confession. It's already done with. I don't deal with it anymore. I was just a kid. You know, kid. Hey, don't judge me. Okay? When I was a kid, I didn't want to go to heaven. You want to know why, why I didn't want to go to heaven? Because I'm like, man, it's going to be so boring. I'm like, it's only one city, and the city's not that big, and if you've seen the whole city, it's like, what else are you going to do? And there are no bowling alleys, and there are no cinemas, and there are no video games, and every day you've got to go to church listening to Jesus preach a sermon all day long for eternity. That don't sound like fun to me. I'm not sure if I want to go. Now, confession, not anymore. Okay? Listen to this. It says, come and share your master's what? Share your master's what? Happiness. Happiness. Who loves to laugh? Guess what? There's a stand-up comedian in heaven. Every day. Moses is guest speaker one day. He was like, well, I was walking across the Red Sea one day. See, here's the cool part if you understand this. God has made each one of you unique. He knows where your humor lies. He knows what gives you joy. He knows what gives you happiness. And he says, heaven is beyond that happiness. See, our God is focused on joy. He says, come 
and share that happiness with them. As soon as I read that, I'm like, thank God I made the right decision. Whew. I'm in all the happiness. Then I love this. The second guy is just like a kid. Watch this. Verse 22, the man of the two towns, where the two towns came, Master, he said, you entrusted me with two. See? See? It's like this. An older brother does something right. He goes to mom and dad, and mom and dad are like, man, you did such a good job. Here's a candy bar. And the little brother saw that he did the same thing as the older brother. What is the younger brother doing? He's going to mom. He's like, mom, I need a two. See, this is what the guy with the two towns, he's like, see? about this, this is joy. He's so happy to show Jesus what he did even with just two. See, when God made you to have the ability of just two, the count of your joy is at two. You're just as blissful as the guy that has a hundred talents. Because God says, I know your ability and I made you just desire two. And when you complete those two, you are over in abundance where your cup overflows with joy. Because you feel fulfilled. It's like this funny joy that I see. You're just happy about everything. You know, like, you do something good and you like, give away 100 pesos to a complete stranger, you're walking like, hmm. People are like, oh my gosh, he's crazy. <laughs> you know? Have you ever done something nice with your talents for God and you walked away and you could have just died in that moment and you're like, wow, that was awesome. That just happened. We get so giggly about things because God gets to use us, and when He uses us with those talents that He gave us, we can't believe it. We're like, whoa, wow. <laughs> you know, I made mean, an example of Jim who printed our tarpaulin behind us for us. And I told him, I said, Jim, do you feel the same way when you look at the tarpaulin? He's like, yeah. He's like, I just look at it. Like, yeah, I did that. <laughs> That's so cool. See, nobody knows it. It's not about necessarily getting recognition. It's about you being used for your talents and God using those in you. And when you realize that you did something special for the kingdom and you feel so special about it, it doesn't matter what the world thinks. You're like, see God? See God? I did it. See God? With just two of them. You and me, God, we did it. Verse 23, the master replied, well done, my good and faithful.